here today with Domenico Delegati, who's a professor of economics at the Catholic University in Milan and one of our successful grantees in our first inaugural INET grants program. Um, and he has a very fascinating project and he's going to tell us a little bit about it today, I hope. Um, Domenico, um, one of the things that jumped out at me oh, in the first paragraph of your proposal is you emphasize the pre-analytic vision okay, that underlies all of your research. Tell us a little bit about that. Well, yes, that's, that's crucial, I think. Uh, Schumpeter uh, actually claimed that any economist has uh, his own pre-analytic vision of the economy, uh, and this is actually the background of any kind of model. So model can be very sophisticated, but at the end of the day, in a nutshell, they are representing the basic ideas, the way in which the economy works that uh, economists have in mind. Pre-analytical vision can be very different. Uh, my pre-analytic vision is actually some something that has been growing over time, starting from 1987 when I finished my PhD thesis under the supervision of Ayman Minsky. So in a sense, uh, my own ideas have been uh, somehow developed under this kind of uh, uh, framework. So financial factors are really very important in any kind of economy, and especially in modern market economies. So, and these ideas are where they are very well in advance with respect to the financial crisis. Mm -hmm. So the financial crisis, global financial crisis of 2007, 2009, they somehow revived and brought to the fore these kind of ideas that were already there. Now, the way you describe this vision in your proposal, you, you call it uh, y that uh, the economy is a web of financial and credit linkages, a network of financial obligations. Could you tell us a little bit more about, about that? Let What's me start again with Ayman Minsky. When I was studying with him, basically the idea was that uh, business fluctuations, the upswing and downswing of GDP, were led by financial factors. Uh, these financial factors were something that you can think of in t aggregate terms, aggregate leverage or whatever of the firms or aggregate leverage of the banks. And this was quite of, uh, uh, an important clue to understand what was going on. Uh, and then over time, I and friends of mine that uh, have been working on these ideas, for instance, Mauro Gallegati, came to the conclusion in the early 90s uh, that uh, also the interaction among single agents, the single bank with other banks, the single firms with other firms, and so on and so forth, were important. So there were interlinkages between firms, and between banks, and between firms and banks. And these interlinkages are very important. Basically, these are borrowing lending relationship. So at the end of the day, the economy can be conceived of as an enormous web of credit interlinkages. And this is something that is uh, below the financial factors in the macroeconomy that were typical of the Minskian models. So this is a step forward. So this is a development from this uh, original uh, vision that you got from your professor, Hyman Minsky, that you refined and you adapted to changing conditions or developed it further. Yes, that's indeed true. And uh, as I said, in the early 90s, I and Maur and other people were aware of the importance of these credit interlinkages. The idea was very, very simple. If a firm goes bankrupt, the bank is actually uh, hit by loss. And then that bank can be pushed on the verge of bankruptcy because it, has, it is uh, uh, recording non-performing loans. And then this can have other repercussions on the rest of the economy. At certain point, we were aware that this, this problem was there, but we didn't have the tools to uh, deal with this problem. And we uh, succeed, we, we are lucky enough or effective enough in finding collaboration with people, especially from other fields, especially in physics, which are actually developing the tools for network theory. I want to hear about this. Is this this agent-based modeling that you talk about? Oh, this agent-based model is something related to, but not identical to network theory. In, in generally speaking, agent-based models are models in which you can keep track of the behavior of a wide range of agents. So this is a far cry from macro models in which basically you have one representative agent for each class, one firm, one consumer, one bank. But the point is that with the development of computer, uh, computers and the computational capability has grown uh, enormously. So now with a laptop, you can build a model uh, with a relatively sophisticated code, but not too sophisticated, and keep track of the development over time of behavior of a wide range, say, millions of, uh, of agents. These agents can be interacting in many different ways. Networks 
are a particular type of interaction of individual agents into an agent-based model. So you have uh, agents that are actually linked to uh, other agents through partnerships of any kind. The partnership that I'm thinking of and I'm focusing on are credit partnership, borrowing lending relationship. So at the end of the day, these are the type of uh, relationships that are really important to understand the role of financial factors in macro models. Mm -hmm. So you make a step forward from aggregate models to uh, completely micro-founded uh, models with heterogeneous interacting with agents. With heterogeneous agents, yes. I perfectly agree with the mainstream economists that say that macroeconomics should be micro-founded. Micro-foundations are absolutely necessary. But micro-foundation does not mean that you have to perfectly micro-found the optimization problem with a single representative agent. You have to take care of the interaction of many different micro-agents to get an idea of what happens at the macro level. A physicist call this emerging properties. So the macro uh, properties of, a, of, a, of an economy are actually what, sur what is surfacing out of the interaction of many different uh, agents at the, micro, uh, at the micro level. This sounds like it's the way it works. You're doing a lot of this on computers, um, and you're the younger generation you're bringing into this too. So just as Hyman Minsky brought you along, you're bringing on younger whippersnappers who are better at, at laptop computers than, than you. Am I right about that? Perfectly right, but don't yeah. tell them. <laughs> <laughs> uh, they start from kids, my, my kid is one of these uh, uh, computer experts, you know, yes. that they are, they are simply playing with uh, computers and then they become so expert. And of course, young, the young generation is very well versed in uh, 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 computer, computing methods, uh, computational techniques, uh, they use extensively MATLAB and other uh, codes uh, and other programs. Uh, to carry on this kind of uh, uh, ideas. But the, my point, and I try, to, I try to be very pushy on this, uh, is that first of all, they had to develop skills in modeling uh, the relationship to, to, put into the, uh, to, to put into the code. There is a temptation that they have to, to run e directly. The, the economic relationship, you mean? Uh, yes, yes, exactly, mm -hmm. exactly. Yeah, the, yeah. The, the, the discipline you get from theorizing is really extremely important. Now, I w I w this makes me think, you know, the discipline, you, we started this interview by talking about this pre-analytic vision, and I wonder to what extent, that, that's a sort of overarching discipline in a way, because you're trying to capture in computer code this sort of vague, inchoate view of the world. Um, and to what extent do you feel that, that, that that's a check, a discipline on, the, uh, on, uh, on letting the computer code run wild? Um, well. In a sense, the pre analytic vision is uh, what drives you to write down a model in one way or the other. Mm -hmm. So it's actually guiding your theorizing. Mm -hmm. So that's uh, very much before you go to the computer to write the code. And that's something that, that is very important because uh, uh, if you don't have a pre analytic vision, you don't have a clue on how to model uh, an economy. So that's uh, impossible to get rid uh, uh, of a, a pre-analytic vision. But that's uh, the first step. Second step is uh, the model, so equations. Uh, and that's where assumptions are so important. Uh, as I said, it is very challenging to write down uh, agent-based model because you have a wide range of uh, assumptions available to you. And what we are trying to do now is to be more credible in the eyes of the profession, also the mainstream economist by narrowing down the range of uh, allowable assumption so that you have a sort of protocol to write down an agent-based model. Mm -hmm. Something that the profession can accept as a sort of disciplining device. And the third step is go to the computer and uh, uh, write down the, 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 the codes. So it, from, from my point of view, the first and second step are enough to discipline the uh, writing down of, of software. So it sounds like you're bringing in, I mean, you have a clear idea of, of the system that you're trying to model, but it's, it's sufficiently open that you can fit in lots of other things that come up, things that are in standard economics, things that you uh, learn just from life, I suppose, and, and that develops over time. How do you get your uh, ideas about what to do next? Do you read the journals? Do you read the newspapers? Do you read great books? Do you talk to colleagues? Do you travel to conferences? What is life like as, an, as, as, a, as Domenico Delegati? Uh, let me tell you this sort of story, which is the story of my uh, career, in a sense. 
I started with Minsky, so I got the, my plan analytic vision from there, and that's, uh, that's, that's enough as a starting point. Then you move along, uh, along a trajectory, and uh, my impression uh, 20 years after is that somehow this trajectory was not planned. You move along in this direction or the other one, sort of a random walk, uh, but you are pushed by research questions that are popping up uh, over uh, along the road. So this idea of networks was popping up in the early 90s when the tools we didn't know, because network theory was out of our field, uh, because we were quite clear that there were examples, in, in Italy for instance, of uh, um, typical borrowing lending relationship between major players, major businesses and major banks that were running amok. So, Reading journals uh, is very important. Reading great books uh, is also very important. I think that uh, also going to conferences is really, it's really very important. At the end of the day, all these are simply uh, vehicles to get ideas of new research questions. And you're moved in one direction or the other because new research questions are uh, in the pipeline, are brewing somehow. Uh, I don't know where I will be in 20 years' time if I'm still alive. Well, it sounds like you've really had an exciting journey so far, and we wish you the best uh, with success in this, in this new venture. Thanks. Thanks.